Welcome to Gemara Academy. In this class, we'll present an overview of the Gemara and Masech the Shabbos on the Feyman Beis and the Vav Amaralf. We'll present an overview of the Gemara with the Teisvis. So let's see the general outline of this class. In this piece of Gemara, we learned that if a person carries an item from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah Rabbim through a Carmelist, there's a Machlikus whether or not he's Chayiv. The Rabbanon hold that he is Chayiv, and Ben Azay holds that he's Pater. And there are six Teisvis on this Gemara. So let's see the flowchart of the Gemara, and then we'll go through all the Teisvis and show how the Teisvis are here to explain and support the Gemara. So in this Gemara, we presented the Machlekes, and the Gemara had two discussions. The first discussion was we questioned the opinion of the Rabbanon, who said he's Chayiv, and we asked, where do we find that such a case is Chayiv? It had to be performed in the Mishkan to be Chayiv. Where do we find that such a case is Chayiv? And the second discussion was on the opinion of Ben Azay, who said that the person's putter, and we explained that Ben Azay only holds that he's putter if he walked from the Rosh Hashanah to the Rosh Hashanah through the Carmelis. However, if he passed the item over the Carmelis or threw it over the Carmelis, then he's going to be Chayev. So the first Teisvis is on the comment that the Gemara made at the very beginning. And the Gemara said, Bishleim ala ben Azai. We can understand the opinion of ben Azai Kasavar because he holds Mahalach Kayim Adami. We can understand why ben Azai holds that the person's potter, since he's of the opinion that Mahalach Kayim Adami, when a person is walking, it's as if he's standing in each place that he walked. And therefore it comes out that he didn't carry from the Rosh Hashanah to the Rosh Hashanah but rather he carried from the Rosh Hashanah to the Carmelis, and then from the Carmelis to the Rosh Hashanah and therefore he's potter. So on this piece, so the, and then the Gemara continued and said, but according to Rabbanon, we don't understand why do they say he's Chayev if we don't find that such a case is Chayev. So on the part that we said we can understand Ben Azai, there's a thesis with three points. The first point in thesis is that he asks, why do we need to give this explanation that Ben Azai is based on the opinion of Mahalach Kaimid? We could have said something much more simple. We could have said Ben Azai makes sense since we, since we don't find that such a case is Chayev. We don't find that such a case was performed in the Mishkan. And it would fit better with the Gemara as well, since the Gemara would say Ben Azai makes sense to say Pater since we don't find that such a case is performed in the Mishkan, but the Rabbanon, they don't, we can't understand why they say Chayev if such a case wasn't performed. So that's the first part, point in Tesis, to explain why we're going to use Mahalach Kaimid. So he's supporting the Gemara in saying Mahalach Kaimid, and he's questioning why we couldn't say something more simple that makes sense to us as we read the Gemara. So he's addressing something that could come up for us as we're learning the Gemara. Second point in Tesis is to understand, according to Ben Azai, it says Mahalach Kaimid, how and when will a person be chai for carrying four amas in Rosh Hashanah When a person carries four amas in Rosh Hashanah if we say Mahalach Kaimid, that he's standing at every point, then he never carried the full four amas. And the third point in Teisvis is that Teisvis explains that there's a teaching earlier from Rabbi Yechanan that could not agree with this teaching of Ben Azai that Mahalach Kaimid Dami. So he's telling us that the limit of Mahalach Kaimid, how will it influence another teaching that we already presented earlier in the previous daf. Then the next Teisvis, goes on the piece of the Gemara where we give our first answer to explain where the Rabbanon are based on. They're based on when a person carries more than four Amas from Rosh Rabbim, that the extra Amas that he carried are not part of the Chiv, and still he's Chayv when he puts it down afterwards. So say the same with the Carmelis, it's not part of the Chiv, still he's Chayv when he puts it down afterwards in the Rosh Hashanah. So here Taisus explains why we didn't compare to, to the more similar case of a person that carried from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah and didn't put it down right away. And those extra amas where he didn't put it down right away are similar to the Carmelis. They're both not part of the Chiv, and still he's Chayv, and he puts it down afterwards in the case when he carried it from the Rosh Hashanah to the Rosh Hashanah So we should say the same when he put it down after exiting the Carmelis, when he put it down into the Rosh Hashanah So Tesis addresses, again, he's supporting the Gemara, a question that would come up for us. Why does the Gemara compare it to this case? It's actually a much more similar case. It's the same case in a sense that it's from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah it just doesn't have the Carmelis in between, so it's a more similar case. Tesis is addressing and, and supporting what the Gemara says. The next Tesis is on the question that the Gemara asks. The Gemara says we cannot compare the two cases, since when he went those extra Amas, although they're not part of the Chiv, if he would have put the item down over there, he would be Chayev. However, if he put the item down in the area that's not part of the Chiv in our case, which is the Carmelis, he'll be Putter. So Tesis addresses, um, he explains why we can't compare it to a case where a person went through a Mokim Ptur. There, if he puts it down, he's going to be Pater. So how does this answer, how does this challenge of the Gemara address that case? When a person carried, for example, one of the cases is four Amas and Rosh but he did it by going above ten Tvachim, which is a Mokim Ptur. If he puts it down over there, he would be Pater, just like by the Carmelis. Nevertheless, when he puts it down afterwards, he's Chayef. Say the same in our case, when he put it down afterwards in the Rosh So So Tesis addresses how really this question in the Gemara addresses that case as well. So once again, we see how Tesis is there to complete the Gemara, that the Gemara doesn't seem to address outright that type of case, and explains to us how it is addressed through this point in the Gemara. The next Tesis is on the final answer which we presented, which is that 
we see it's chayev because when a person carries from Rishus Yachet to Rishus Rabbim through the area that's in between, which is called the Tzidah Rishus Rabbim, the area that they left, not without building their homes, they didn't build their homes right off the Rishus Rabbim. They would build it at a distance. That area in between is a Tzidah Rishus Rabbim. It's a Carmelis, and in that case, a person's chayev for carrying. So we see that a person's chayev when he carries from a Rishus Yachet to Rishus Rabbim through a Carmelis. The same should apply when a person carried from the store to the plaza through the bench area. So Tesis over here explains, how does this answer our question? We asked, what do we find that a person's chayev for such a case? And we present that he's chayev in, the, in a case of derech tzidu v'shes And where do we find that such a case is chayev? We could just continue asking the question. Our challenge was that we don't find such a case in the Mishkan. And we answer that, well, if a person carried from this rishas ayachah to that rishas ayachah through this type of karmelis, he's chayev. And we could ask him that as well. Why? We don't find that such a case was performed in the Mishkan. Tesis explains, that that's a case that was in the Mishkan, since in the Mishkan they probably did it the same way, that they had an area of empty space between the tents and the Rosh Hashanah. The next taste is on the comment of Rav Achabar Eder Aviko, who said that Rav Eliezer only said that the city Rosh Hashanah, that area between the Rosh Hashanah and Rosh Hashanah, he only said that it's considered Rosh Hashanah when there are no barriers separating the Rosh Hashanah from it. However, if there are barriers, then he will not hold it to Rosh Hashanah. And Tesis challenges this from a Gemara in Erevin that indicates that even when there are barriers, Rabbi Lezer still holds it as Rosh Hashanah. So once again, Tesis is coming to support what the Gemara says, because it seems like it's incorrect based on a Gemara in Erevin. And the last and final Tesis is on the Bryce that we presented at the end, that Ben Azay only says that a person is potter if he carried from the Rosh Hashanah to the Rosh Hashanah through the Carmelis. We said the case was that he carried from the Chanus Laplatia, the store, to the public plaza through the bench area. However, if he would throw the item over or pass it over, then he's going to be chayev. So Tesis asks, why by carrying do we say that he carries through Tzidu Rosh Hashanah, he's chayev. When he passes and throws through Tzidu Rosh Hashanah, he's also chayev. Why when it comes to the bench area, do we say that carrying is potter? We don't learn it out from today, but throwing and passing is chayev, and we do, do learn it out of today. And what Tesis basically explains is that the truth is that even today carrying is potter. We're saying today carrying is potter, and so too by the bench area. And by today throwing and passing is chayev, and so too by the bench area. So once again, Tesis is supporting the Gemara. The Gemara presents the opinion of an Azay, which doesn't seem to make sense to us. And Tesis asks that question and resolves it.